Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about two comparison tests uh, as another batch of tests that we can add to our um, bag of convergence tests. All of the tests so far deal with positive term series with the exception of geometric series. Um, we have the integral test that if you integrate a function that looks like the general term of a series, then whatever this, that integral does, the series will do. If the integral converges, the series converges. If the integral diverges, the series diverges. We do have a test for divergence. We should always look first to see that the uh, general term goes to zero. If the general term does not go to zero, we're done. We say the series diverges. We should also make sure that the series we have, uh, it, whether or not it's, make a decision whether or not it's a P-series. We use comparison tests for things that look like P-series or look like geometric series, but are somewhat different. For instance, the series two over three to the K is a geometric series. It looks like two over three plus two over three squared plus two over three cubed. Geometric, because each time I move from one term to the other, I'm multiplying by one third. When we stick a K right here in front of the three to the K, then it's not quite geometric. In the next example, this should be from k is equal to 1 to infinity. In the next example, we have a p-series. In fact, it's our harmonic series where p is equal to 1, the world-famous harmonic series that diverges. Right underneath it, we have something that has a k in it, but it's not quite a harmonic series because it's got a polynomial down there instead of a single k. So that's what makes it not a p-series, but it sure would look like a p-series if I took away the two and the one. For those types of series that are not quite geometric or not quite p-series, we have what's called the direct comparison test. We're gonna use this a lot, so I'm gonna abbreviate the direct comparison test with direct comparison test. In my picture, I've drawn a convergent series in red, that's the lookalike series. And AK is the series that we're testing. I've drawn that in blue. This says that if you have a convergent series whose terms are all bigger than the series that we're testing, and we know that the CK terms converge, then so does the AK terms. The way I say this is that if, it's, if your series is smaller than a convergent series, then it converges. Smaller than convergent is convergent. And I'll say that over and over again when I'm using the direct comparison test. Smaller than convergent is convergent. The other case is if your lookalike series is a divergent series and the AKs, which again I've drawn in blue and I've drawn the divergent series in red, if the AKs are all bigger than the DKs and the DKs diverge, right? So let me draw that in red. So if I connected these with the dots and these I know diverge, then the ones bigger than it will certainly diverge. They follow the other one. If AK is bigger than the terms in a divergent series, then AK also di diverges, where that's a series. And the way I say that is bigger than divergent is divergent. We build the lookalike series by throwing away the extra stuff 
and we decide what the lookalike series does, and then we try to check the size. If the sizes compare the way the two parts of the direct comparison test tell us, then we can decide what happens to the AK series. For example, the first series we had, 2 divided by K times 3 to the K, I said looked a lot like the series 2 over 3 to the K. I can use this as my comparison series because when K is large, do you agree that 3 to the K grows faster than K? So it's the more important term. The behavior of this series is going to follow 3 to the K. So this is my lookalike series. And it's a geometric series. Right? It has the form of a times r to the k. If I factor out that 2, it looks like 2 times 1 over 3 to the k. Whether the k is down here or up with the 1, it doesn't matter. So r is going to be 1 third. And remember that when the multiplier is smaller than 1, then the geometric series converges. So I've got a convergent series that I'm comparing it to. Now let's look at the size. How does k times 3 to the k compare to 3 to the k? Well, it's clearly bigger because it's got a k in it. Now I'm going to flip both sides of the inequality. When you flip an inequality, or when you flip both sides, you flip the direction of the inequality. And whether I have a 1 on top or a 2 on top, right, I can multiply now by 2, The series that I'm testing is smaller than a convergent series. So my conclusion is smaller than convergent is convergent. So our series converges. By the direct comparison test. Okay. All right, the next one, 1 over 2k minus 1, I said we can compare that to the series 1 over, well, actually, we can compare it to 1 over 2k. The 2 doesn't matter. I just throw away the 1. That's not going to make a hill of beans when k is way out there at a big number. So this is going to be my comparison series. If you hide that 2, that's a divergent p series. Now we can compare the sizes. The denominator of the given series is clearly smaller than the denominator of the series that I built, because it's one less. Now flip both sides of the inequality. That flips the direction of the inequality. And so I have that the series we're testing is bigger than a divergent series. So bigger than divergent is divergent. So our series diverges by the direct comparison test. So the name of the game is find a lookalike series. And really, you just start throwing away things that don't matter. Let's look at example three. I've got a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. So I'm going to throw away the insignificant terms in both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to pick my lookalike series, throw away the one in the numerator, and now downstairs of all those terms, the k cubed term is the most important, so I keep it. Now I can reduce that, cancel one of the k's, and my lookalike series is going to be 1 over k squared. Now I need to compare size.
Well, that's kind of hard in this case because I did more than just toss out one term. I took a one away from the numerator, so my comparison series has a smaller top, but also a smaller bottom. So I'm not sure which is bigger. I don't know if my series is smaller than a convergent or bigger than divergent. Well, I do know that this is convergent. It's a P-series where P is 2. Right? P-series converge whenever that power is bigger than 1. But I just can't compare size. So I need something else. Da-da-da-da! What if the CK converges, but we have something that's bigger than convergent, or if the DK diverges, but our series is smaller than divergent, or like in the last example, I don't know which is bigger or smaller? Well, no worries. We have a handy dandy limit comparison test for positive term series, and I'm gonna abbreviate that one, the LCT. The limit comparison test says, don't worry about which one's bigger. Just find you a lookalike series, decide what your lookalike series does, and then look at the limit of the given series with your lookalike series as k goes to infinity. If it has a limit that is both positive and finite, then both series do the same thing. So before I do the example underneath here, I'm going to move above and go back to that example that I couldn't tell which one is larger. So I'm going to back up here. So I'm going to use the limit comparison test. I'm going to form the limit as k goes to infinity, put our given series here on top, and then divide by our lookalike series, which I said simplified to 1 over k squared. When we flip and multiply, this k squared is going to hit the k plus 1, and that'll give us k cubed plus k squared divided by k cubed plus 2k plus 1. We can do that limit in our head. They both have the same degree on top and the bottom, so that limit is going to be 1. My limit is positive and finite, so now I can make my conclusion that both series do the same thing. Earlier, I decided that the series that I built was a convergent P-series. So our series converges. And that's it. That's by the limit comparison test. So some folks tend to like the limit comparison test better than the regular comparison test because you can skip that pesky step of seeing which series is bigger than the other. I kind of like it better too, because I'm really good at taking limits. You practice both of them so you can decide which one is the one for you. Okay, down here at example one over three to the K minus two. Again, we form our lookalike series to be, just throw the junk away, right? The minus 2 doesn't matter. So my lookalike series is 1 over 3 to the k. Anybody out there recognize that as a convergent geometric series? When the base is a number and the exponent is our counter, that's the giveaway that you have a geometric series. If you start running powers in here, I have 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 3 cubed and so on. So it's a geometric series and our 
terms are off by a factor of one-third. So our multiplier is one-third. Remember that a geometric series converges whenever r is smaller than 1. So this is a convergent lookalike series. But the sizes don't mesh. Look at uh, 3 to the k minus 2 is smaller than 3 to the k. So 1 over 3 to the k minus 2 is bigger than 1 over 3 to the k. Our direct comparison test says that if you're smaller than convergent, the series converges. So this goes the wrong direction in order to use the direct comparison test. But like I said earlier, we have a handy dandy limit comparison test. So let's try it. Let's do the limit comparison test. We take the limit. As k goes to infinity, we take the given series divided by 1 over 3 to the k, do the flip and multiply. I'll get a 3 to the k on top and a 3 to the k minus 2 on the bottom. This works much the same way as the polynomials do. These grow at the same rate. They're the significant terms in the numerator and denominator. Since they grow at the same rate, the limit is going to be the ratio of the coefficients. So they both have a 1, so our limit is going to be 1. In the limit comparison test, is if the limit is positive and finite, both series do the same. So up here, our series was convergent, which means this series is convergent by the limit comparison test. Okay, so let's look at the next example. It's got a whole lot of fluff on it. So when there's a whole bunch of terms, the limit comparison test is really good. We start by building our lookalike series. So I start in the numerator, and between the two terms in the numerator, the two is the insignificant one. Now I go downstairs, and the insignificant term in the denominator is the five. So I'm gonna keep the square root of k, and I'm gonna keep the k. There's my lookalike series. I can reduce by canceling the k, and so I'm gonna use as my lookalike series, 3 divided by the square root of k. Now we have to decide what that does. I hope you recognize this as a p-series. Again, a p-series has the counter, k, as the base, and the power as the constant, just the opposite of a geometric series. This is a p-series where the power is a half. And remember that p-series diverge when the power is smaller than 1. If you forget which one it is, integrate real quick. If you integrate k to the negative 1 half, you get a k to the 1 half, which is clearly going to diverge as k goes to infinity. So I'm comparing to a divergent series. But I don't know which series is bigger. I don't even want to mess with which series is bigger. Because when I made my lookalike series, I threw away 2 in the numerator and added 5 in the denominator. So I, I, don't, I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to dive straight to the limit comparison test, which says take the limit as k goes to infinity of the given series ak over the bk. Try to calculate that limit. We'll do it by simplifying. To divide by 3 over square root of k, I flip that and multiply. So here's the numerator. Now I'm going to flip like that. And so the square roots of k 
are both factors. I can cancel them. And now I look to take the limit as k goes to infinity. And I have a 3k plus 2 on top and a 3k minus 15 on the bottom. Again, we eyeball this limit. They're both the same power of k, so I should get 3 over 3, or a limit is 1. If you get a positive finite limit, both series do the same. I look up here and I saw that my series that was the lookalike series diverges, so our series diverges. By the limit comparison test. It's important that you tell me all the steps that you're doing. Tell me what step you're doing. Tell me what your lookalike series is and what its behavior is. And then clearly state your conclusion. Limit comparison test is nice. All you need to do is take the limit of the given series and the lookalike series. And if you get a positive finite limit, boom, you're done. Works very well with series whose terms look like polynomials or radicals or something like that. The only problem is, what if the limit isn't positive or finite? Well, if the limit is zero or if the limit is infinity, we use the special case called the zero infinity limit comparison test. It has some limitations, but we can still make a judgment if the limit is zero or if the limit is infinity in some cases. The first one is if our limit is zero and our lookalike series converges, then so does the testing series, right? Think about it. If you make this ratio and the limit is zero, that means the BKs are growing faster. In other words, they're lying on top of the AKs. They're bigger. So they smush the limit down to zero. Remember, smaller than convergent is convergent. So that kind of agrees with that. The other case is if the ratio of the two series has an infinite limit, that means the AKs are growing faster. So they're bigger than the BKs. And if the BKs diverge and the AKs are bigger than a divergent, then the AKs will diverge. So it essentially is a restatement of the limit comparison test. It still says smaller than convergent is convergent and bigger than divergent is divergent. One place where we can use this is with the example that I have below. So I'm going to pick a lookalike series I'm going to pick uh, my lookalike series. Well, I have no choice but to keep the k cubed down here. Now remember in our tower of power, the natural log of k is smaller than k to any power. So I'm going to use the fact that the natural log of k is smaller than k. So I'm just gonna put a k here. And that means I can use one over k squared as my comparison series. One over k squared is a p series. Well, p is two. If the power is bigger than one, then it converges. So my comparison series is a convergent p series. I could use the direct comparison test. Let me show you the limit comparison test. I take the limit as k goes to infinity of the natural log of k over k cubed, and I divide it by 1 over k squared. Flip and multiply, and I'll have the natural log of k over k cubed times 
k squared over 1. So I'll take the limit as k goes to infinity of the natural log of k over k. By our tower of power, the log of k grows slower than k. So if the top grows slower than the bottom, this limit will be zero. So I've got a zero limit and my bk's are convergent. So that's the first part of the zero infinity case. It's the zero case. I've got a convergent bk and a limit of zero by the zero infinity limit comparison test, the, this series converges. So this converges by the zero infinity case of the limit comparison test. Series of the form that we just had with a logarithm up here and a k to a power down here, we're gonna put a q down there Series that have that form are called Q log series. And they behave a lot like P series. You can use an integral test or the, like, the comparison test like I just did. In the last example, Q was three. Anytime the Q is bigger than one, the Q log series will converge. Anytime the Q is one or smaller, the Q log series will diverge. So if Q is bigger than one, the series converges. If Q is less than or equal to one, the series diverges. So the logarithm has to be on the top and the Q is the power on the counter, K. If you remember that, then Q log series can be just as helpful to you as P series are. If you don't remember it, you can always get this by integrating. Unfortunately, it would probably mean doing some integration by parts, maybe. So, kind of handy, maybe you can try to remember it. That concludes are two comparison tests. With a slight note here, I'm gonna say comparison tests are good when you have some sort of series that looks like a polynomial over a polynomial, or maybe you've got square roots, or things that are nearly geometric, or things that are nearly P-series. In the next section, we're gonna encounter terms that have K powers and K factorials, and the comparison tests are lousy for those. So let's get some practice working with comparison tests, and then we'll worry about the more complicated series. Try the problems on the uh, class notes.